Really? Not in the top 10? Guardians of the Galaxy is not in the top 10. I don't agree with this, I tell you right now, I don't agree with this ranking. It's so great. Who the hell knew about the Guardians of the Galaxy before they walked in? It was a risk on so many levels for Marvel to make Guardians of the Galaxy that now that it's a smash hit, nobody's really thinking about those risks that Marvel took making a feature film that's using a brand new character to go out into the cosmos and introduce a tree and a talking raccoon. It was not a popular title the way like Spider-Man is popular or Superman. Guardians of the Galaxy is like, you know, it's like a sidebar character in the Marvel Universe. All in all, a talking raccoon should be scary for anyone to put on screen, much less in a space opera. What's a raccoon? What's a raccoon? It's what you are, stupid. This changed the entire superhero genre because we thought that you had to pick the Batman, you had to pick the Spider-Man, but I never realized that you could pick something that nobody even knew about, and that would be a huge hit. This is crazy that this movie could be made and be the hit that it was. It's the most remarkable success that Marvel's ever gonna have. Guardians of the Galaxy, whoo, just when you thought it was gonna be nothing but Iron Man and nothing but Batman and all these superheroes we've heard of time after time after time comes all these diverse characters from another part of the galaxy that we didn't know existed. What a bunch of a-holes. Guardians of the Galaxy was a fantastic, really fun adventure film. It was like the millennial Star Wars to me. It's like they finally got some film that they could claim as their own. I went opening weekend and this movie delivered. This, is, this was one of the surprises of the century. Seeing Guardians for the first time, I was just like, wow. I felt like I had just seen Star Wars for the first time. Really, right now, at this point in time, Guardians of the Galaxy is still my favorite MCU movie. It, it was above and beyond what I thought it was gonna be. I was laughing the whole time. It's a different kind of movie. The humor works, the chemistry works. Oh. We're just like Kevin Bacon. I feel like this movie did a great job of giving you the laughs, giving you a twist on the superhero movie that you hadn't seen before, while still giving you the origin of these heroes that you expect from these movies. We're all standing up now. Bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. Everything in this script and the whole premise of Guardians of the Galaxy, you'd be like, that's a tough story to adapt. But James Gunn made them this great group of, of characters that you just want to root for, even though they're kind of, you know, they're like, they're like the B-team Avengers. There's another name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Star-Lord is my favorite Guardian. I'm sorry, Chris Pratt is so phenomenal. That opening scene, when he puts on the Walkman and he starts dancing around, it immediately made me love Star-Lord. He, he, he's like a Han Solo-esque kind of character, you know? He's kind of a scoundrel, he's a ladies' man. He's fun, man, like, I, he's a mess. I like characters that have a boatload of issues that they really need to deal with. You might have a little bit of scumbaggery in you, but we love you for it, Star-Lord. At the end of the day, he's gonna do the right thing, so it's fun to root for a character who may not be the most morally-centric person we've ever met, but isn't that part of the fun? There's one thing I hate, it's a man without integrity. Peter Quill, people call me Star-Lord. Gamora is an incredible fighter, but the personal situation she's in is also incredibly moving and kind of touching and upsetting, and I felt for her as a character right from the start. When I mean, you have Gamora, you have a daughter of Thanos, one of Thanos' stepchildren, so to get Thanos in the picture, if you want to get to that big story that we have coming soon, you have that connection to Thanos, you have one of his daughters, who that's very important if you're gonna tell that story. Your words mean nothing to me. A lot of people were skeptical of seeing Drax, because remember, back then, it was gonna be Jason Momoa playing Drax, and a lot of people wanted Jason Momoa because they remember him in Game of Thrones. So when they announced that it was Batista, they were like, oh, this is probably a mistake. But what we got was one of the funniest characters we have in the MCU now. Metaphors are gonna go over his head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I did not think that Dave Batista was gonna do as much with the role as he did. I didn't think he was gonna be bad, but that delivery, it's not just about saying the line a certain way and getting the laugh. He brings so much more out of that character. Drax was and still is my favorite guardian. Rocket is seriously my favorite of the Guardians. I love that character. He is a complicated, sad, really messed up character, and they don't shy away from that. 
and he's a raccoon. Oh, yeah. I love that goddamn raccoon. He's so cute and lovable, but he's also so funny. And I just, I, I want to be the raccoon. I never thought I'd walk out of the theater saying I want to be a raccoon, but uh, yeah, I want to be a woodland creature. I am Vin Diesel doing fantastic work as Groot. What he's able to do with three words, three words, consistently throughout a movie is very difficult. And so he deserves a lot of credit for being that fifth part of that team. I am Groot. Groot is my favorite guardian. I am Groot! Come on, look at him. Just, he does whatever he wants. Like, hey, don't go do that. And he's just like, it was kind of like me in the 10th grade. My parents like, don't throw a party. And then I had 60 people over in a keg and like, we told you not to have a party. And I'm like, I am Groot. The fact that I actually started crying because a tree died, that's pretty incredible that a film was able to do that. James Gunn made a talking tree and a raccoon superheroes that people love. How the fuck do you do that? We are Groot. Guardians of the Galaxy is the first of the Marvel movies to really incorporate my favorite thing which is 80s and 70s classic rock, especially on a tape. Oh my God, the soundtrack of this movie is so good. It's just all sweet 70s jams and I'm like there for it. This movie uses music as a character better than almost any movie in our, in our like modern era. Baby Driver probably being the only thing I can think of that does it better. I love the music in Guardians of the Galaxy, and what makes me even happier about loving it is because it's so well woven into the story. We're not talking about a soundtrack that simply exists so that it could sell more copies and make more money. That music is so important to Peter Quill as a character. Who's got a feeling? Blue Sweet, 1973, that song belongs to me! It was a brilliant decision to use this type of music the villains in this movie is probably where you get some criticisms from Marvel fans because I think that, who, who's, I mean, obviously Thanos, when he shows up, I love it. He's just this kind of condescending conversations he's having with what's his face? Right, no one remembers. The villain in Guardians of the Galaxy is, yeah, who's the villain, Thanos? Is Thanos the villain? He's the blue guy and I'm blanking on his name. I can't remember his name, what's his name? The villain in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, is, it, <laughs> is it? Is it Thanos? Is it? It's it's kind of Yondu. Ronan. The villain in Guardians of the Galaxy is Lee Pace's Ronan the Accuser. I like Ronan. I think he's he's a very simple-minded kind of. He knows what he wants. I like his theatricality. I like that Lee Pace is just embodying just an over-the-top superhero comic book character. Yeah, I don't think Lee Pace is the weakest part of this movie at all. Lee Pace is great as Roman. He's, he's vicious when he needs to be vicious. He's powerful when he needs to be powerful. Even though I will admit Ronan isn't a particularly strong villain in and of himself, his connection to Thanos and therefore his connection to Nebula and Gamora, I think it weaves him into the story and the growth of these characters particularly well. This is the perfect movie to introduce us into the Marvel cosmic universe. It can't be understated also how important Guardians of the Galaxy is towards the bigger picture Marvel universe. This is the movie that kicked open the door to the cosmos. If this movie hadn't worked, they might not have ever done Infinity War. This was the gamble where they transitioned from the realistic superhero into the fantastical one. Infinity Stone. It's a good number. Number 12 is a good number. That's high up there. I can't say that Guardians of the Galaxy is my favorite MCU movie and not say I would rather it be in the top 10. Guardians would definitely be higher for me on my personal list. It'd absolutely be in the top 10 for sure. I think it should have been maybe a little lower. I, I enjoyed it, but maybe around maybe more like the 20s. Maybe like 20s, uh, early, low 20s to mid 20s for me. What? Holy shit. This is a top 10 comic movie and it's not even close. Like, it's so much more special than at least one of the movies that's gonna end up in that top 10 that there's just no question. Man, it's tough for me because now we're getting down to just like a bunch of really good ones and I would probably put it at 10 in my top 10. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a pro Guardians kind of person. I think 12 is appropriate because I think it did something that we'd never seen before. And so for me, I think number 12 feels feels appropriate. 12 might be high, but the ballsy film is a different film and I, I could understand why it's a 12. 
Number 12 is perfect for Guardians of the Galaxy because that's who they are. They're misfits. They're not the prototypical fighting for justice and always doing the right thing. They're the rogues. They're on the outside of everything. They're the kids who weren't paying attention in class. They were outside getting high listening to rock music in a van. They belong at number 12 because they're not supposed to be in the top 10. 